Uh, I was looking for an IKEA 8080 review and I came across a couple. Um, one of the comments that I saw on there was that the, um, the microphone only worked with a CD and with a tape. That is also true for the 8080. Um, in my comment I kind of said that the reason why probably is they just want it to be easy. Um, they don't want obviously a teacher to be fiddling around taking in and taking this in and out and so the only time you would actually have the microphone going is if those were playing so that's my only guess on why they would do that is it smart probably not they probably should have had a switch of mic on and mic off but that being said this um, particular model has all the same features as the 7070 but it also has USB records so I decided since I've already got the mic or the um, camera going let's go ahead and Watch that. This particular one I got for four dollars and ninety nine cents, um, and when I did get it, the reason why I got it for four dollars and ninety nine cents is because the cap stand on here is broken. Um, it actually said it wasn't working, and that's actually not true. It was working. It plays and records fine, but it doesn't rewind. Um, also, the counter doesn't work. So my feeling is that the counter probably has something to do with that particular problem. That being said, I haven't opened it up, but at some point in time I'm going to uh, look at it. Uh, the problem with this cap stand, it needs a particular small disc piece that holds it down on the spindle. And I'm going to have to source that. And if it costs me too much money, I'm, I've got other tape machines. So, um, let's go ahead and start. First things first, let's look at the USB. Um, on the USB, you will notice that there is absolutely nothing coming up. There we go. So we've got two songs and one file system. I'm going to go ahead and do this instead of zoom in. Um, and you'll see uh, once we're done we should have uh, four songs and three file systems. But we'll find that out in one second if that is absolutely true. What we're going to do is we're going to hit the record button, the USB record button and you'll notice that it flashes because it doesn't know what we're going to be doing but we're going to go ahead and press play on this and it's going to head and start we can turn it down and talk about it very quickly you'll notice that it's accessing it this continuously uh, if I do a 20 second clip it takes about five seconds to process it and turn it into an mp3 build a file system and put it in there so we're going to press stop and as soon as I stop actually this stops showing uh, it just shows lines and you can see that it's accessing the uh, the um, the USB and now we have three file three sys uh, three songs and we have two files that second file will say TP which means tape because it recorded from the tape 0001 and that will happen throughout so it'll just create another file system for each time my feeling is every time you press pause actually we could probably do that but we'll do that uh, yeah let's do that so let's go ahead and press record. We're going to hit 4 now. We're going to hit this. And let's hit pause. That didn't work. Maybe pause. And then play again. And now we've got number 2. Pause. Begin 3. And play again. And that's how you'd record your analog. Okay, and for each one of those, you're going to have, you know, three to five seconds right now. So once we press stop, it's going to process all those, and we should have file system three, so file zero, zero, or file zero 03, and we should have six songs. Yep, six songs, three file systems. So that's kind of how the USB works. Again, with such a little amount of input or output, actually, that you can see, it does everything relatively good, I think, for just having a little LED um, system. So let's go ahead and... Um, look our LCD. Let's go ahead and look at the DVD. For the DVD, or I'm sorry, CD. For the CD, we're going to go ahead and switch it to CD. We're going to take this and put it in the case. Got a CD real quick and pop it in. Same kind of situation. We'll listen to that right after. The, we'll listen to each one of those or at least a sample from both the tape and the CD. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to hit this button. Actually, we're going to press play first on the CD. I notice that if it doesn't recognize a CD, I can't press this record. Then I'll press stop and stop. And now it's got the numbers here and so now I can hit my record and it's going to wait. 
So again, that's one of those weird things. It has to recognize that a CD is in there before it will record. And now it started recording. So once it accessed the CD, it knew the CD was there, it was ready to record. Stop and stop. And now it's going to go ahead and process that. We'll put it back to CD and we should have a fifth file, a fourth file system and a seventh song. So, and this one will be under CD001 or 0001. And then obviously inside that you're going to have track 001 for both the tape and the, um, this is when you're looking at the computer, but both the tape and the um, CD. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and listen. We're on this USB. Let's go ahead and listen to what we've got. We've got the original two songs. Oh no, sorry, this is the song that we recorded from tape. So that's pretty good. So it's really good for recording to MP3. Let's go ahead and hit the next one. So if you'll notice real quick, um, as it goes through, this is actually that second one we did. I don't know exactly how this organizes it. When it goes on the computer, it organizes different. But I guess since that was the last one, it becomes the first one accessed. So this is now in the beginning of the playlist for here. There's our CD. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and press stop on that. And we've got it, so what I'm gonna do, also you can skip through folders. Like I said, we've got four folders. Let's go to the fourth folder. I believe that's the one we want. That would be the most, that would be the one that I put on the computer. Yep. So that's the one that I got from the computer. So I'm going to go ahead and press tape, or not press tape, but we're still on USB. I'm going to kind of fast forward a little bit on this, so we'll get past the leader. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press play. Nope. Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and go to the folder. So I want to skip folders. One, two, three, four. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and press play. Actually, I'm going to press record and then play. Somebody in a cultivated moment of distress composed themselves enough to artfully carve so so in this desk. There was okay. Now. Unfortunately, I don't have rewind, so we can't really listen to it like that. We'll just, whoops, fast forward. Um, if anyone knows where I can get a part for that, would be awesome. Or maybe just, you know, get, a, get it from an old cassette deck or something. I'm not sure, but I'm not sure if all those parts are all pretty basic. By the way, that's me using the microphone. To be honest, it's a really good record for, um, you know, for going straight, for first of all having a cap sound that's not in the best of position or in the best condition and for having just kind of a normal HF Sony Type 1 normal bias. So it's a good, I mean, the, the voice sounded really clear and crisp. So that was nice. Of course, it's a brand new tape. So that's the Ike Stereo 8080. Again, um, I could show you the mic, but it's just a bunch of feedback. I've tried several times to do it without that. You know, I'll go ahead and just kind of do that. So uh, again, you have to have a CD playing, so we'll have to put it on CD. And uh, just to show you, I'm going to go ahead and set it on record, and you can see now it's recording my voice. However, it's not doing anything about it. And then as soon as I press play. <laughs> 
testing one to too much feedback and I press stop and it's still recording on this. So there you go, there's the Ike 8080. Um, I think that this would probably function a lot better um, as a as a um, recorder for audio, uh, for um, analog to digital than much else. And also I think uh, for me at least I'm going to be using it for a DVD player. There you go. For I think it was $12.99 at uh, 